morning. He's going to be making some massive sandwiches as usual. They have a huge sandwich eating contest that will be happening tonight in honor of the Bills' uh, primetime game. And a bunch of us are going to be out there kind of helping out. Yep. Also, they're doing a great uh, event for uh, breast cancer awareness and uh, raising money as well. So we're definitely going to be talking to him about that. Now, uh, also, we're going to have coming up in just a little bit, speaking of restaurants, we're going to have our friend Alex from Yelp talking about some uh, local dishes that are kind of getting you in the mood for fall. That's right. And you may have seen the spooky looking people out in the hallway just now. I saw you. <laughs> hey, I'm what is that? What's that? <laughs> All right. So we're <laughs> we have some spooky characters. They're from Fright Nights at Darien Lake. They are back for another season and we're going to check out all of the fun, I guess, or yeah. frights there are uh, to, to check out over there in a little bit. Also kind of apropos this time of year that Ghost is coming to Shea, so we're going to be sitting down with the man in charge of that to see uh, what's happening down there. That's right, but we want to start off with these little fun furry hats that we have on set. Look um, during the Bills game tonight, yeah. of course, they play in Cleveland prime time tonight. They're, both teams are 2-2 two and two heading into yep, this game. Should be a good one. That's not the only exciting thing that's happening, though. It's the first um, NFL game of October, so it's their first breast cancer awareness game. You know they usually go all out. They right. turn everything pink on their uniforms, and these have just arrived from our friends at New Era. Very um, cool. These are their, your season's editions of the pink on-field caps. And uh, all the, it's always neat, too, interesting what the players do, because they usually wear the, cl the cleats, mm -hmm. the gloves, and uh, different things like that, too. So it's always interesting to see what they do. But obviously, uh, how can we not talk about that guy right there, Kiko Alonso? You he's ju he's just been the man fever, right now. fever, don't you, Anthony? Well, the, the thing is, what's been great about him is uh, I'm an Oregon Duck fan, so I've actually been watching him for several years. So it's kind of been fun uh, to see him uh, make the next step. And obviously, Bills fans love him, too, uh, as everybody can talk about on Twitter. I'm sure you guys have talked about that, too. Yeah, I'm loving the, um, the legend of Kiko Alonso. It's kind of basically Chuck Norris jokes regurgitated yeah, absolutely. in honor of this guy because he had a great game on Sunday. Everyone's kind of riding that wave. Yeah. And we both were talking about our favorite Kiko Alonso legend. Yeah, joke. the reason we said this is actually because uh, BuzzFeed, uh, a big uh, nationally publicated uh, website, uh, had this whole thing. It's so it kind of caught wind and it's going kind of everywhere there. So my favorite uh, was talking about how he went tubing down Niagara Falls, or as he calls it, the, the lazy, lazy river. river. I thought that one was pretty good. So you had a good one too. The one that I personally made up is uh, in nine months the most popular baby name in Buffalo <laughs> will be Kiko for both guys and or baby boys and baby girls. So Kiko, that right. was that was my best attempt at comedy. <laughs> anyway, so keep your good, eye huh? on better Kiko. Better than you usually do. So good <laughs> hey, job. What do you mean? I'm getting good. <laughs> I'm getting good. All right. Something that's kind of funny but not really so funny. Um, people are looking for a way to laugh kind of if they can at the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. We love what um, our some of our colleagues over at CNN did. They went around and asked kids what they thought of it. Oh, interesting. You should do the right thing, not the wrong thing. You should at least give the effort to agree with somebody instead of acting like a bunch of babies. You should act like adults because you are and agree with people. Nine years old, why, does this, why is this so easy for you to figure out? Yes? Because, because we're kids and sometimes kids, we, we have smarter ideas than grown-ups. Now that right there, that was a group of fourth graders from Immaculate Conception Elementary School, which is in New York City. They sat down with CNN's Chris Cuomo. They expressed their thoughts very well, I should say, about the federal government shutdown. And when you put it like that, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with them. Also kind of makes everyone look silly, too. They, they sound great. I mean, I, sometimes it seems like kids they have do figured have out. better ideas than grown-ups. That reminds me of those AT&T commercials where the guy is sitting there saying, you know, to the group of kindergartners, what's better, faster or slower? Right. It's like that simple, you know? And his grandma was on a they, cheetah's they back, something like that, too. A, tape a cheetah to his grandma's back. I'm glad you clarified that for <laughs> That's me, That's right. Yeah. Fact-checking Anthony Kanji on the couch. <laughs> okay, speaking of the government shutdown, it's actually has... We're seeing the effect here on Winging It Buffalo style. Oh. Did you know about this? I, I did not. I thought you were going to talk about the area. I did not know about Winging It. Oh, no. It, it. Okay. Is hit, it is hitting the Winging It couch right now. I, you I know, feel like I'm going to get, like... Like slime. Get ready What's for your mind to be blown. Okay. Every Thursday we do a throwback Thursday. Okay, picture, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, that's when we take a picture from Buffalo's past and kind of revisit another point in our history. I'm, I'm nervous. Should I be nervous right now? No, Why am I nervous? Fine. Don't okay. be nervous. But typically right. we get these photos for our Throwback Thursday pictures from the Library of Congress's website because oh. they're all in the um, and they're all in the public domain. And they're not open right and now. They're, and so we logged on yesterday. Bridget, our producer, logged on yesterday and actually sent me this screenshot that said the Library of Congress's website is closed due to the government shutdown. Okay. So this is a photo that we had saved a couple a couple weeks or a couple months ago in preparation for future Throwback Thursday segments. We know that it's the all 
Albright Knox Gallery in Buffalo. We don't have all of the information about it because we <laughs> were thwarted from uh, finding it out yesterday in the library. But it looks Congress beautiful as it always does. Also, we should do a throwback Thursday. Shout out to our own Jackie Walker. She actually just tweeted out a short time ago that today is her 30th anniversary here at News 4. Incredible. And she actually posted a picture too. Make sure you guys go check that out. I'm sure uh, we can put it on ours. I know I tweeted out just a short time ago. It's awesome to see that too. And Incredible accomplishment from Jackie. Absolutely. Yeah, we love having her. So. And I love to see the photos that she posts of, you know, her career over the years because I, you got to notice her hairstyle and the way that it's changed since she's, you know, started working here. 30, 30 years, years is a long time, you know. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the hairstyles change a lot in those times, but she keeps it good, you yeah, know. She looks great. Ja yeah. At Jackie Walker 4 is her Twitter account right. if you want to see. Yeah, make that sure you check photo. it out. It's a really cool photo, too. 30 years ago. Incre really it's incredible. Cool. Yep. Good Incredible. Buffalo legend. All right, now let's toss over to Emily Lenahan for a look at what's happening online today. Hi, Emily. Hi, guys. Yes, very exciting anniversary for Jackie Walker. We're lucky to have such a great example for women in Buffalo here at News 4. I will definitely retweet her tweet from earlier so you can all take a look. But right now, we are looking at our Facebook and Twitter accounts for the Buffalo Bills because the Bills play tonight in prime time. But it's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the NFL is always very involved. And you'll see the Bills on their Facebook and Twitter page just put up a pink ribbon to show that and you know one player is really going the extra mile if you take a look at Aaron Williams Twitter or Twitter and Instagram accounts you will see he got a pink mohawk for the month for breast cancer awareness and you know he is getting tons of attention for it almost 800 people liked this picture so Aaron Williams will be out playing tonight with his pink mohawk for breast cancer awareness. So let us know if you have any great pictures of, you know, different pink you're wearing or doing around Western New York. We would love to share those pictures throughout the month. Now, speaking of pictures, I want to take you to our website, WIVB.com, where we're posting pictures that we've been getting in this morning. We've been getting in amazing sunrise pictures from all parts of Western New York, and I made a photo gallery with them this morning. So if you want to take a look, you can find them right on WIVB.com. If you took a picture yourself, send it over and I'll add it to our gallery. Uh, that's it for now. Time to send it back out to the studio. Thanks, Emily. We are just weeks away from the curtain rising on another M&T Bank Broadway series at Shea's Performing Arts Center. This year, things kick off with a show that successfully made the big jump from the silver screen to the stage. We're talking about Ghost the Musical, and right now we're joined by a very special guest to discuss not just this show, but the entire upcoming season. We are joined by Tony Award winner uh -huh. Albert Nutt. Not Chilino. Not Chilino. There we go. We just practiced, but <laughs> Thank you. you have been one of the co-presenters of the M&T Bank Broadway series at Chase for going on 26 years. Yes, it's hard to imagine, but it's been a long time, and uh, it's been a great, great run here in, in Buffalo and, and with one of the most spectacular theaters in America at Chase. It absolutely is, and I can say that because we were talking about this off camera, but I am a proud season ticket holder at Chase, a proud subscriber to the M&T Bank Broadway series, and we really have you to thank here in Buffalo for all these fantastic shows coming Well, thank you, but we year. have people like you to thank. I was thrilled to hear that you were a subscriber because obviously they are the foundation of what we do uh, every year. But uh, you know, it's a, it's an exciting season again, and and Buffalo's a great theater town. It really is, and it, we were saying, you know, it's kind of like you develop relationships with the people who you sit with when you subscribe to these season tickets and right. it's something that's been successful here but is really getting even more successful right we have one of the most successful one week theater seasons in america with um, almost 13,000 subscribers uh, every show wants to find their way to buffalo and particularly to shays and what i really like about the story here is how the community has embraced this magnificent theater uh, you mentioned the relationships in the theater subscribers come they love the shows they sit in their same seats every night for every show they have fun they they get to see fabulous shows in this magnificent space and it's a really a wonderful experience for everybody we really do and i love to hear you say that these shows are, wait to come to shape can't wait. wait to come here what is it like when you're working with these productions and you know explaining them to what it's like to perform well there's several in several uh, components that go into it but you know very quickly obviously what the commitment that was made to restore the theater to renovate the theater to and they started from the curtain back initially so they made the back of the house beautiful so every show in america can fit on this theater and then what they've done uh, inside with tony conti and the restoration staff the commitment to making this theater look like it did when it was built some 80 some years ago it's uh, it's pretty magnificent and then as i mentioned i for me what's really special is how this community says this is our theater yes this is our we theater we own this theater, and they support it uh, extraordinarily. 
All right, let's talk about Ghost the Musical. Okay. Of course, everyone knows the film starring Patrick Swayze, Jimmy Moore. Right. What is it going to be like on stage? It's exactly the same story. Matthew Orcus, the Tony Award winning director, has adapted this movie to the stage. This wonderful love story between Sam and Molly, the great music, the Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody song mm -hmm. that everybody knows. But what's really, I think, pretty extraordinary is to take these, uh, this show from the screen and put it on stage and try to create the same kind of special effects because you have a person who's really a ghost right. but still exists and he's on stage and it's live and the way they've created the special effects for this show makes it pretty special. And what I like about this show uh, for, for I think Buffalo and every city in America, because it was a movie, it's friendly. It's and I think familiar. it is exactly familiar. So not only for our subscribers, I think people who, who don't normally come to the theater will enjoy coming to see the show because they'll say, you know, I know this story. I want to come and see what happens. So we're really excited to kick off the season. And not just ghosts. the story, but the music, a lot of the pop music from exactly. that will be re-inspired exactly. for the stage as exactly. well. Exactly. Great, great music. Wonderful show to start the season. All right, that's October 15th to 20th. We're, we're running out of time, but real quick, give us just another rundown of the other shows. We have ahead. great season. We, we finish up with, uh, we start, next is War Horse, Tony Ward winning musical, family show, Grinch Who Stole Christmas. We go to uh, Porgy and Bess, a wonderful, wonderful uh, classic once the Tony Warren Woody musical and finish up again with another classic Avita and then we have Wicked coming back and I think I did that and Beauty and the Beast so we have a great season amazing. of theater. And another amazing thing that we uh, need to congratulate Albert Nacholino on your most recent Tony Thank Award you. for the biggest show on Broadway right now which is Kinky Boots. Kinky Boots. That's Cindy right. Lauper, Harvey Fines. We're just thrilled about the show. So congratulations Thank you so to much you. For Thanks for stopping by. I hope you can come back next time I'd love to. Thank you for having me. All right, me. what's going on over in the kitchen? Um, or Anthony, sorry. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Yeah, we're here with our good friend Chef Tom from Brawler's Deli. Hey, thanks for joining us as no always, problem. too. All right, no you guys problem. have a big event coming up tonight. Yes. What are you guys doing, first Actually, of all? every year we do a big uh, three-and-a-half-pound sandwich eating contest, which is actually going to be part of this sandwich here. Yeah. Um, we raise everything for Roswell for breast cancer Very for cool. October. Uh, and it doesn't hurt the fact that the Bills are playing the Thursday night game exactly. against the Browns tonight. So basically it's the Bills, the the barrel, which is what we call that beer and breast cancer. So we got all the bees on there. And make sure you guys come check it out. There's going to be a lot of us there, too. I know I'm going to be a guest bartending. I think I heard Lou Raguse is actually going to try and take down yep. this massive sandwich. Yep. I, I am going to be amazed if he does that, too. <laughs> but you, we are going to be doing this, but you're actually going to be doing something else yep. with us yeah, here today, too. Yeah, this is actually too. a new sandwich we haven't even made, and we, you'll be able to get it tonight. All right. Um, what do we got? Actually, it's going to be roast beef uh, with a spicy horseradish sauce and okay. some crispy onions. Um, I can actually start some of that so we can get this soaked. Yeah. Um, just we're going to take some sliced red onions. And, and for those of you who milk. don't know too, make sure you guys come and check this out. Uh, Brawler's Deli, just downstairs from Pearl Street. Great place. And, the, and you have how many TVs you said down we there tonight? We have 13 TVs, so you'll it, be able to watch all the Bills games, plus the baseball games tonight. Yeah, too. two huge baseball games too that we're going to be talking about. Tom's going to get this uh, ready. We're going to be building two different sandwiches. Can't wait to see both of these. In the meantime, let's see what's going on in the weather department with Todd. All right, sounds good. Kind of ready for a three pound sandwich right about now. But hey, many of you, as you're heading out the door today, cooler temperatures, dry, a lot of sunshine. We've had some great sun sunrise picks, as Emily was mentioning, that we've been getting them into the website. I do want to mention a few areas that we're starting to see some improved visibility, even down towards Bradford, PA, Wellsville. Still maybe a little bit of patchy fog here and there, but we're starting to see that dissipate, leaving us with a few thin high clouds, especially over eastern Allegheny County. Get back towards us, uh, say Western Chautauqua County. Still dry conditions right now, but if I pan out just a little ways, you start to see something poking in the frame there. Central Lake Erie, those showers are pushing in our direction, as well as, again, even some of the cloud cover. So we're going to see increasing clouds late this afternoon and evening. There's a look at some of the temperatures, at least to start off. We're going to still warm up pretty nicely, though. We're looking today for some low 70s across the area, despite the increase in clouds. Keep in mind, though, the southern tier could see a chance for some showers afternoon, and the rest of us, especially on towards the north, better chances. Later on this evening and overnight tonight, we'll keep some of those showers going on and off through Friday. They back off the chances a bit into Saturday, and then Sunday those chances return. Some of that lingers on into Monday with some slightly cooler temperatures to start next week. Let's check in with news. Here's Teresa. Well, Todd, at this hour, we are following some breaking news out of the town of Tonawanda. Police confirming to us uh, that the school is on lockdown. North Tonawanda High School on lockdown after they in are investigating a robbery nearby at a CVS on Payne Avenue. We will keep you updated throughout the day on this story on our website, WIVB.com. Also in the news at this hour, thousands of people packed into Kleinhans Music Hall last night for a school summit. Many say the redesigned state tests don't allow for teacher feedback and shouldn't be used to evaluate teachers and districts. 
The Buffalo Sabres kicked off the season with a 2-1 road loss to the Detroit Red Wings last night. We'll talk about that, but we want to talk to you about this snake. Someone found this snake sitting in a local park and sent us the picture. A lot of people have been asking questions about the snake, wondering if it's indigenous to this area or not. Uh, the viewer who sent this in seems to think that it's too large. So we are looking into this story, story for you today, and uh, we will continue to give you any updates on that. But I do want to talk about the Sabres and the new Harbor Center. We know that they uh, struggled with the loss last night to the Red Wings, but fans are excited about what is happening here at Hockey Heaven. Uh, we uh, gave you kind of a sneak preview of this on the morning show. More than 100 workers have logged about 60,000 hours since spring. There are three floors down and they still have 17 more to go. And that is a look at some of our top stories today. Back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Teresa. We have a, a really special guest coming up here in just a little bit. We have the Goat Cheese Brothers. Is that what I hear? The Goat Cheese Brothers of Western New York. I they love are the name. Celebrities around All right, here. cool. Well, they actually have a couple really cool fresh dairy products right from our own backyard. I'm really interested to see what they have coming up. And take a look who got a little tuckered out walking the Great Wall of China. We've got your details on Bieber's latest stunt coming up in the dish. And it's getting spooky over in our green room. We're going to check in with a few frightening friends from Darien Lake coming up. My name is Nina Baroni of buffalofoodie.com, and my tip is eat local, support buffalo farms and restaurants. Until a century ago, my family, the original family, ruled New Orleans. Why don't you explain what it is you've been up to in my town? I rule this city now. Show me some respect. It's sacrilege, 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 sac
And we also have no reaction from Miley this morning, despite the images getting plenty of attention online. The Beebs is also stirring up some great controversy. Yes, it's controversy yet again, this time from the Great Wall of China. A photo showing bodyguards carrying Justin up the Great Wall's steep staircases has surfaced from his Believe Tour Twitter feed instantly sparking mockery and backlash around the globe. Bieber's camp has not yet commented on the photo, although they did remove it from their feed. And it's always fun when we have our friends from Darien Lake in the studio, but today it's going to be uh, the spooky variety of fun. We have Amber Shashelka here back from the park. Did I get the name right? You did. Uh, <laughs> all right, there we go. And we're talking about Fright Night, and we obviously, you have some very interesting guests here. We do. Some of our characters have escaped the park and made their way uh -oh. over to the CW this morning. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay they're on television, so everyone's going to know they're here. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so far they're definitely behaving. So what kind of things do you all have planned for us this fall at Darien Lake? Sure, we have a whole lot of things going on. Not only are there fall families, days but we also have fright nights going on and you can come and check out four different spooky experiences and those come on after dusk and they sound I was reading up on them they sound really spooky give us a quick uh, lowdown on what they all are they are and actually we have a new um, experience this year the haunted mine where it takes guests through a dark experience and they have to follow their sight and their sounds to take them through this very spooky cavern so you're kind of all completely everything's covered and you have to use your exactly and that's uh, that's just one senses. of the four mm -hmm. and there's another like a evil Carnival? We do. One? We have Carnival again, which is a guest favorite, and um, everyone can come back and enjoy that as well. And then there's some other um, Road Rage Cage and some other spooky things throughout the park that right, everyone let's can talk enjoy. About those spooky things in the studio. Where did you guys come into play in all of this fright night at Darien Lake? <laughs> Amber, can you help them out? I don't sure, know if they speak sure. our language. <laughs> they don't actually, but some of some of the characters you can see our miner here. You'll find him in the haunted mine, and some of our other characters you can find him in Carnival. So they've uh, they've escaped that area of the park today, but but that's where you'd normally find them. And I've been to Fright Nights at Darien Lake in the past. I have to tell you, they're very terrifying to me. <laughs> they are, but but there's stuff for kids as well. There are, and during the days we have pumpkin picking and costume contests. So it's a really great family environment during the day, and that's the best part about coming to Darien Lake, especially in the fall, because there's some for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, who knew that Darien Lake had a pumpkin patch? That's incredible. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what, when are you guys open? When are, when are all these events happening? We're opening Friday evenings and Saturdays up until October 12th. Okay. And then we're also open on October 13th. That's the last Sunday for the holiday weekend. All right. And uh, are the rides open as well still? The rides are. So on top of all the family fun and the spooky going on, you can also enjoy all of your favorite rides. All right, there you go. About 10 more seconds to scare our audience, spook people. <laughs> all right, and again, this is happening all at Darien Lake. Amber, thanks for bringing them in. And that's more information can be found at www.darienlake.com. Now let's go see if, what's going on in the kitchen. Anything spooky over there, Anthony? Well, uh, it, a three and a half pound sandwich sure is spooky to me, but that's what we're gonna be cooking up in just a little bit here. Plus another sandwich, we have Chef Tom from Brawlers, and we're gonna head straight back into the kitchen when we come back. of an eye everything changes if you are hurt you could be looking at loss of work lost wages medical bills how will you pay the rent or put food on the table you may be entitled to compensation but you need to have the right person by your side call robert birkin attorney for the people he will fight to get the compensation you deserve call today there are no legal fees unless i recover money for you call robert birkin today 856-4080 Dewville, when you're here, you're almost there. Five-year programs are tailored towards students that um, want to get their professional degrees um, and at the same time um, get out in the job market and be competitive. And when you add that to our, our internships, the very courses that we offer for students to take as electives, they can really market themselves in ways that uh, make them more competitive than a lot of candidates from other places. For more information, visit Dewville on the web, dyc.edu. Dewville, educating for life. CCS Oncology is comprehensive cancer services. We treat all stages and types of cancer, specializing in radiation therapy, chemotherapy, hematology, surgery, and genetic screening. As cancer patients, it's very important to live with the hope. We're here to help you fight against the toughest battle of your life with the best technology available. New hope for all stages and types of cancer is at CCS Oncology. 
So why switch to Dish? With Dish, you get more options. You get more value. You get more channels. With Dish, you get more. And now you get more for less. Save up to $872 in just your first year with our best deal ever. With promotional prices starting at just $19.99 a month for 12 months. We've gotten better quality, better customer service. And now you can even get HD channels free for life. We are Dish customers for life. We love Dish. This is our best deal ever. Call now to switch to Dish. Don't wait. Call or text 8. Tim Horton's Cafe and Big Shops. Welcome back into the kitchen. We're talking spooky things in a three and a half pound sandwich. Actually sounds like it would be very scary to my bowels. However, Chef Tom is in here making something else. We are going to talk about the barrel yep. sandwich, of course, which is a favorite. But you have a special treat for us here on Winging yep. It that you've never made before? We've never made this. I sleep of sandwiches and I guess <laughs> I thought about this last night. Some people dream other yes. things. You dream sandwiches. Yep. And since we're a brewery, I'm actually adding beer to the sandwich. I'm so shocked by that. <laughs> So I started off with just some flour, salt, pepper, garlic, okay. um, a little cayenne, and a little paprika. The onions are sliced, and we soaked them for about a half hour in uh, buttermilk. Okay. So basically, we're going to just fry these up. We're gonna buttermilk, get them all... cut the onion a little bit? Is that what it does? Well, or usually what does a lot of people use like an egg wash, Okay. the milk and eggs. We're actually just going to give it a little bit, because this sandwich is going to have the crunchy onions in there. Okay. And it's a roast beef sandwich that we're doing. It's right? going to be a roast beef sandwich. In a minute, we're going to actually going to make the horseradish sauce Perfect. with it. And we're just going to fry these up a little bit. Nothing wrong with fried onions. That's right. Everybody loves fried onions. And as you can see, we started on that sandwich there. Yeah. Because it takes for, a while to make. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, tonight there is a big event taking place at Brawlers. And part of that is their sandwich eating contest, a three and a half pound sandwich. Is yes. that what it is? Yeah. And uh, apparently, News 4's Lou Ragusa is going to give this baby a go. You know, Tom <laughs> asked me, he said, could you do it? I said, no, I, I don't even want to yeah. think about trying. That just sounds like. I want to enjoy my food. And I don't Brian, want to be pained by my Brian food. Brian Shaw tried it a couple years ago. He came close. He came real close. And well, more power to those guys. So, all right. So he's going to be cheering everybody on tonight. So. Absolutely. We're all going to be cheering them on and, uh, and, and praying for Lou also at yes. the same time. All yeah. right. This is going to cook up, and we're going to show you guys how to make the, uh, the horseradish sauce in just yep. a little bit. But in the meantime, let's send things over to Lauren. Thanks so much, Anthony. Nothing spooky or scary over here. Just all the wonderful, delicious fall flavors. Alex from Yelp brought in, brought in some of his favorite local picks. We're going to get a look at that next in the hot sauce. And then we're going to take a trip out to First Light Creamery. It's a farm that is producing fresh dairy products that you will enjoy in many of your local stores here in Western New York. We'll have all the details on that coming up. Backstreet Boy Nick Carter is on the couch with the juicy details of his new tell-all book. Really had my first drink when I was like eight or nine years old. Thursday at five on CW23. We have new information on the most wanted sandwiches in Western New York. <laughs> I'll make this brief. These sandwiches were last seen at Marco's Italian Deli. Be on the lookout for Nikki Whispers. Big, beefy, surprisingly sweet. Maria Gumati, a spicy little number. Everyone wants to get their hands on. And the underboss, notorious and nearly impossible to knock off. If you see these sandwiches, do not, I repeat, do not apprehend them alone. They are extremely tasty. And no further questions at this time. Thank you. Many people would rather text than call. And Ross and I know that in the event of an emergency, it's often easier to send a text message than to call. That's why Salino Barnes now offers a texting option. Text 888-8888. If you're in an accident, don't wait. Call 8. Or text 8. Salino and Barnes, injury attorneys, call 888 -888. Don't wait. Call 8. Or don't wait. Text 8. Two replacement windows. See the difference? Theirs has a tilt and sash. So does Window World. Our window carries the good housekeeping seal and qualifies for this year's $200 energy tax credit. And so does theirs. Both windows come with a lifetime warranty. The difference between these two windows isn't the quality. The difference is the price. Window World, $289 per window installed. Theirs, $400 or more. Check it out for yourself. Compare Window World's price to theirs, then compare our quality. I'm so sure it measures up. I not only stand behind our window, 
I can stand on it. Can you stand on theirs? Maybe, but it'll cost you. Window World, a quality window at a fair price. $289 per window installed. Call 656-0100. That's 656-0100. Window World, simply the best for less. The Stripper and the DA. Next into the edition. Did the district attorney have a forbidden love of... the hot sauce today you can feel fall in the air and you can also taste it at your local restaurants right yeah that's Absolutely. right alex our good friend from yelp is here and uh, and so first of all alex it seems like like a lot of places i go to lately they're, they're doing a little twist on uh, on the fall stuff you know and uh, apple pumpkin things like that you always see this time of year absolutely so what we got here is we've distilled four great businesses that are doing great fall twists all right. using very seasonal vegetables you know, people have different associations when they think of fall. They think of different root vegetables. They think of apple crisp, of course. And so the first business that really got a lot, a lot of clamor on Yelp was Bistro Europa. Now, they're just known for their endless creativity, okay. and they have a new menu pretty much every day. Now, I just brought in every a little... Every day. No, <laughs> no big deal. I have cheapers down at Bistro Europa. All right, so what did we have so here? I have this looks beets, very colorful. Beets Five Ways. Now, it's a beet mousse, beet carpaccio. All these beets are from local farms, and this is just a sample. I mean, if you go there, one of the Yelpers, a little pro tip, the sticky toffee pudding. They literally wrote... I pray to heaven that they will never stop serving it. So that's the one thing people hope that doesn't and change. And that they won't run out of napkins. To be honest, I had no idea beets were a seasonal type thing. So oh, I didn't yeah. even know that they were. I mean, I'm not a beet guy personally, but I mean, I mean I, I, I'm not afraid How to try you it. To this, no, that I'll try incredible. all of those, but I guess I've only really had on like salads you can and stuff even like eat that. The flour here. Do you want to eat the flour, Anthony? You want to try? Uh, anyway, I don't so care. I'll try anything. Let's put the flour. Okay. All right. Okay. As Alex goes, <laughs> All right, I want to talk about some of these. Right, I want to talk about either beer or sweets. Right, That's so what I want to talk about. We'll go about. right to the wine. We got oh, it's just, wine. just vino oh, it's here. Good. And this is a steampunk cider okay. from Leonard Oaks on the Niagara wow. Wine Trail. So they do a lot of seasonal pairings. And something that they got going on that people oh, really yeah. enjoy is their Wednesday. Is it? Mm -hmm. Their Wednesday $20 three course dinner. What? With two bottles of wine for 20 bucks. Nice. And you got pumpkin soup with chili, cran apple, relish coming up. I have to imagine the Yelpers like that, oh, like yeah. that deal, don't they? Reservations deal, required. Sure. So. Okay, so that's Wednesday night. Yeah, absolutely. At Just Vino, 846 Main Street. All cool. right, Just Vino. So the next thing Let's we got. Sweets. We got Mayor Bros. Pie, right? And that's that's out in West Seneca. West Seneca, yeah, off and transit. Great yeah, place. Yeah, it's a store. They. People on Yelp go crazy for, and I tried to bring some in, but I actually drank it all on the way up here. <laughs> the cider slushy. The, the cider slushy, slushy you is got money. It. We yeah. got the Your boy has had a couple heard. cider slushies. And so in they have apple lie. butter out there. They have yeah. all sorts of stuff. As really you can cool see. Uh, little store too. Do you guys all go check out? Absolutely. And we have another apple treat right here too. Yeah, Whoa. no, this is a peach treat actually. Okay. It's Whoops. it's a peach gallant from. Elm Street Bakery, and people on Yelp have literally written love letters to this bakery. And after, <laughs> after going on there, I mean, after going in there, I can see why. They do yeah. really great pizzas, everything. The, the eggs are farm fresh. Everything pretty much here is sourced from local farms and nearby, so I am a big fan. All right, all great picks, things. Alex. Always, if you want to read those love letters or any other reviews from <laughs> Yelp, you can just go to yelp.com slash buffalo, right? Yeah, get connected to your local businesses. All right, and if you think Alex might have forgotten one or not found your favorite fall treat, make sure to go on and let him know because you always want to know about that stuff, Absolutely. Right? All right, thanks so much, Alex, from Yelp for being here. Uh, next, we're going to send it back to Emily Lenahan for another.com check. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. Yes, you know, we were continuing that conversation online this morning, and we asked our viewers what their favorite fall foods are, and we're getting lots of different ideas. Some we heard of from Yelp, some we didn't. I know Jacqueline and Belinda both said their favorite fall food is chili. Um, Elizabeth said apple pie and Debbie said apple crisp. We also have Christina who says her favorite thing is pot roast in the crock pot. So let us know what your favorite things are uh, on our Facebook page and Twitter page this morning. Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing those. Now if your favorite thing to do in the fall is make your favorite foods, I want to take you over to our website wingingit.tv. 
When you're on our website, you will see the entertainment section right in that gray bar across the top. Click there, it will bring you to this page where you'll see all different kinds of great ideas of different fall activities and fall foods. I know a couple of people mentioned chili. You'll see there's a couple of chili recipes for you there. And there's also something for one of my favorite fall foods, which is of course those toasted pumpkin seeds. If you want to make pumpkin seeds, you can just follow along with these directions. And all you need are these ingredients, follow the directions, and there's even pictures to go along with it. So that's a great resource right on our entertainment page. Same goes for candy corn and pumpkin cookies. So check that out as well. Something fun maybe to do with the family. Again, that's all on wingingit.tv on our entertainment page. But now it's time to send it over to Lauren. Thanks so much, Em. If you're still looking for something fun to do with the family, making your own goat cheese might just be the way to go. Matt checked out all how all of this is made down at the First Light Creamery. From the yogurt you eat with your morning meal to the cheese on your sandwich at lunchtime, dairy is a staple in most Americans' diet. Spending a day at First Light Farm and Creamery was my way of learning just what it takes for that milk in your glass to go from farm to table. First Light Farm and Creamery is a farmstead artisanal creamery. Uh, so the first part you can see, we're on a farm. Uh, the goat's milk that we use to make cheese here comes from our animals. We milk 54 Nubian, Sanin, and Alpine dairy goats. Come on, let's go, let's go. My first task was getting a few things straight about goats and goat's Come milk. Come on, girls. Come on, let's go. Goats have a unique personality. Every single one here has a name, um, and we know each one. Uh, because we're a dairy, we work with them every day, twice a day. Uh, they are milked. Um, and I just love that long-term relationship that you have with an animal when you milk it every day. And according to Tristan, goat's milk is the most consumed milk on the planet, creating dairy products that are both delicious and easy to digest. And these products are being made right on site at first light. We make two kinds of cheese here. We make goat cheese and cow's milk cheese. Every three days we make goat's milk cheese. So uh, it's moved over to the processing side of the plant and turned into cheese. Once over to the plant, the milk is made into 17 different cheeses. Each cheese finds its unique flavor and subtle differences. It's a physical process. Um, making cheese is an art and a science. Um, there's part of it that's just straight up chemistry, but there's an art to it as well. And if it is an art, it's work done in detailed brush strokes. Slight variations. Um, when, we're, when we make cheese, we're using probiotics, which are beneficial bacteria, much like we hear about in yogurt. Um, and when we make different cheeses, select for different types of probiotics. Change the environment, change the cheese. For example, we make two different kinds of cow's milk cheese that are both in the same family. We make cheddar and Monterey Jack. Uh, cheddar is a cheese that we heat up to around 100 degrees. The difference between that and Monterey Jack is just two degrees Fahrenheit. And if your curiosity has been piqued and you're interested in learning more about that milk in your glass, First Light wants to help. We felt it was really important to create that connection, to give people that connection between farm to table. Um, so we teach classes here at the farm. Uh, almost every weekend we offer some form of opportunity to come out to the farm and interact with the animals and make cheese or milk or yogurt. This connection between the food you eat and where it comes from will hopefully help you better understand your food and in the end make smarter, healthier choices when it comes to what you eat. All right, thanks so much, Matt. And if you can't make it to Bethany to visit the Goat Cheese Brothers of Western New York, all you have to do is go to www.first-light.farm.com if you're interested in finding out where you can get their wonderful goat cheese products. Now let's go see what Anthony's up to over in the kitchen. All right, I'm not going to lie. We are not talking healthy food. We're talking good food, though. <laughs> yes, our, yes. Our friend Chef Tom from Brawler's Deli. And uh, we're making a very cool roast beef sandwich, yep. and we have uh, some onions that we just did in some yes. oil. Um, and what, what else are we doing? We haven't even named this yet, first of all. We haven't even named it. You're well, grabbing the, the beer. I like yes. it. <laughs> well, actually, this is our rye beer. This is our seasonal. It's, it's about 4.5% alcohol. A rye toast. beer. Yep. Technically, you know, a little bit smoother, kind of an amber yep. type. Okay. Yep, it's made with toasted rye. <laughs> Very cool. And we're just going to actually cook our roast beef. Right into that. That's interesting. Right in all right, cool. Just to give it a little bit of beer flavor, because yep. we are a brewery, so we have to do that. Nothing wrong with any of that. And then we're going to make the horseradish sauce. Okay. We're actually going to use a little bit of mayonnaise. A little bit. Now this will make a couple that, that, That's a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Some sour cream. All right. And there's the good stuff. Of course, the horseradish. 
Plug your nose, everyone at home. <laughs> and to sweeten it up a little bit, we're gonna go a little bit of honey. Okay. And give it just that little. And while bit you're of doing that, we actually want to remind people that you guys have a great event going on tonight. It is called the Barrel Beer and Breast Cancer Awareness. It's happening at Brawler's Deli. There you guys see it right there. Brawler's Deli, by the way, just downstairs from Pearl Street downtown. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys come check it out. Um, on top of uh, the wonderful food and beer, uh, there's a uh, an event happening for Roswell where you guys yes. are, are raising money for breast cancer awareness. Yes. Correct. Yep. All right, yeah, cool. Basically, the, all the funds from the sandwiches and all that are going to be towards yep, there. Yep, there is a sandwich eating contest, believe it or not, for this bad boy right here. Three and a half pounds of sandwich. That yep. is called the barrel right there. And uh, one of our own, Lou Raguse, is actually going to try and tackle that bad boy tonight, yes. believe it or not. Brian Shaw is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Lauren's going to be there. Make sure you guys come and check it out. And of course, support Roswell as well. Yep. All right, so uh, you just simmer so, it in beer. Yep, so we're simmering it in beer. And the final step. We also have our own homemade mustard, which Very is cool. our, made from our Lake Effect beer. Beer on beer. Yep, and that's a little bit of a spiciness. All right. All right. And and you were saying this is for probably a few sandwiches, this is or at least I'm hoping for, right? Because yes. <laughs> you know, at Brawler's Deli, we always have to have a lot. Yeah, so, absolutely. And then we toasted up some nice ciabatta rolls. Okay. And we're actually going to put a nice amount of the horseradish sauce on there. Sure, you want to get the good stuff. Yeah. We'll do that on both ends. All right. Because we do have the beer to wash it down. So if it is a little spicy, <laughs> we're good. I'm noticing a theme, Tom. Yes. I'm not yes. going to lie. <laughs> All right. That looks pretty good. We oh, it wanna, smells great, too. Like I said, that rye beer sort of helps that out. Yeah. And we're just going to. Nice and juicy. Yeah, and uh, we have to mention, of course, I'm sure all Bills fans know, but they, of course, are playing the uh, the Cleveland Browns tonight. Not everybody yes. does have the uh, NFL Network, so make sure you guys come and check it out. That's right. You we guys have, have 13, 13, 13 TVs. 13 TVs, plus we'll have the baseball game on. We have two baseball games playing today. Yep, absolutely. The Divisional Series starts tonight in the National League. So, And then look at that. Oh, now you're just being so mean. mean. Yeah. We're going to top it off with those crispy onions that we just made. And then to really top it off to give it a little bit more, we're gonna actually going to go a little bit of cheddar cheese on that. And wash it down with a beer, too, I'm and assuming, And wash it right? down with a beer. <laughs> All right, we have a little bit of time left here, Tom. Let's talk about this barrel that okay. you guys always do yes. here. Yeah, actually, uh, only nine people have completed this out of, I think, what did I say, about 58, 50-something, 50 <laughs> I think, is what the count's at. I'm amazed anyone can even attempt it. I mean, this is, this is insane. Yes, yeah. I mean, as you can see, this is a 16-ounce pint glass, and we're, up, <laughs> we're already past that. Um, we give you an hour to eat that. An hour, okay. And you can eat it any way you want. And so the event tonight, obviously it's an eating contest. This is it first to eat to finish it? How does that work? Uh, no, it's basically we give you an hour. Okay. And then, what we'll and then do hopefully it, you just <laughs> finish yeah. it. All I right. mean, and we'll do little contests today. I'm, uh, normally you get bragging rights, a picture on the wall, and that kind of thing. But All tonight right. we'll actually do cash prizes and that. A guy last year actually did it in 13 minutes. Are you serious? He did in 13 minutes. I don't I, even, I'm I, not a math uh, I'm a math guy. I'm not smart enough for that. But I would think like uh, poundage per minute, that is not healthy. It's not healthy, no. <laughs> and uh, he actually, uh, after he got done, ate a slice of pizza. Oh, come and two on. slices of cheesecake Jeez. afterwards. Well, good for that, man. Hey, we, we salute you, sir, whoever you may be. <laughs> Tom's going to finish this up, and then we're going to talk more about the event in just a little bit. In the meantime, let's send it over to Lauren on the couch. Thanks, Anthony. The spooky characters from Darien Lake may have left the building, but we're not done with the vampires just yet. There's a brand new vampire show premiering right here tonight on the CW23. Our CW star, Matt Snyder, got to check out the premiere before anyone else. From sci-fi to vampires, even historical dramas, all of the big trends of the small screen are hitting this network, the CW, this season. Here to tell us about all of the new shows, of course, is CW star Matt Snyder. And one of the cool things about my job is I get to see the pilots of the new series before they hit your televisions at home. So we want to share what we're excited for. The first one we want to talk about is the originals because that airs tonight on the CW. And uh, for you Vampire Diaries fans, it's a little bit of a spin-off. Which is kind of cool, because Vampire's Diaries, of course, is a, one of the most successful shows on our network, and they're still pumping out new episodes as well, so you kind of get two for one here. Yeah, so the plot line here is it follows the three original vampires as they head back to New Orleans to clear up some of the uh, vampire dirty work that's being done. It follows Kloss. <laughs> Klaus, who is one of the original vampires, as he um, kind of runs into some difficulties with his progeny, of course, the vampire he created. Um, there's of witches, <laughs> there's werewolves, there's werewolf-vampire hybrids, 
Everything you like in your, your fantasy sci-fi world is all right there and, in, uh, in the Vampire Diaries. And some cool music as well. Yeah, so the originals, which follows the spinoff of the Vampire Diaries, uh, has great music. I think the CW shows are known for their music. They find a, sort of find all the mainstream bands and put them in the shows before they hit you know, really big. And then you can say, hey, I heard that on the originals the exactly. other day. Exactly. <laughs> I heard the originals on the originals. <laughs> there you go. All right, the next one is what we've been calling kind of a dumbed down or more kid-friendly version I would, of Game of Thrones. I would definitely say kid-friendly version of Game of Thrones to an extent. I mean, I don't think your younger kids are going to watch this, but, you know, your, your teenagers are going to love this. This follows Mary, Queen of Scott, her rise to power. She heads over to France when she's 15 and is sort of engaged to uh, Prince Francis. She brings her three ladies in waiting and they have all the hijinks that could possibly happen in a castle. Music again is a highlight of this. They played one of my favorite Mumford and Son songs in that first pilot. So if you like costumes, you like drama, and you like Game of Thrones, this is going to be the show for you. We're talking about Rain, of course. Great costumes as well. Like you said, when is the premiere for Rain? This one premieres the ninth, so we'll probably talk about it a little bit when it does come up a little bit closer. Okay, kind of a princessy theme Princess, to that one. Right? <laughs> Alright, the next one is more of an alien theme. Yeah, well this one is called the Tomorrow People. So this follows a, I guess you could call it like a subsection of the human race that have uh, evolved to have teleporting powers, uh, talking with their mind powers, uh, everything you could possibly do, telekinesis. And uh, I guess there's some people that uh, that don't want them to exist. They feel a little threatened. This follows kind of- Well, I don't blame them. Yeah. That's a lot of superpowers going on you for know, one person. But this one's cool because it's tied in with a little bit of family drama. So you find out that one of the character's dad is not in the picture and, and you hope to find out why. Uh, so if you like X-Men, if you like that yeah. kind of stuff, there was a movie Jumper that felt a little similar to it. I mean, I think out of all of them, the one I enjoyed the most uh, so far is The Tomorrow the People. The Tomorrow People kind of Avengers-like, yeah. it sounds like yeah. to me. Yeah, a little bit of uh, superheroes. Now, there's two other shows that we're not going to talk to right now because they're mid-season shows. So as they come closer, of course, we're going to give you everything you know, need to know about them. But uh, a little uh, teaser, if you like Romeo and Juliet, there's definitely going to be a show for you. All right, but again, it all starts tonight with the premiere of the originals here on the CW23. Yeah. Great soundtracks to check out.